Greetings. Welcome, my dear friends, to the early access version of All Quiet in the Trenches. We are playing version 0.5.3 of the game, down the bottom left there. I had fun with the, the demo of this, so I figured may as well support the devs by actually purchasing the game in early access. And now I get to show it to you lovely people. The devs, by the way, are totally not aliens. That is what they are known as. I find it a very convincing name and don't remotely suspect that they might, in fact, be aliens. Anyway, let us begin a new game. We want a single save game. And we'll keep the tutorial in case there's anything different. Ooh, tense. Fun. Okay. Monday, March 1st, 1915. I could still hardly believe that a few days ago back home I had been appointed under officer in charge of this handful of men. But here they were, sneaking through the trenches behind me, not a hundred meters from the enemy positions, with heavy packs and dwindling strength. Alfred Lotz, badly shaven, had so far mainly caught my attention through his cynical remarks. Wolfgang Kohn had appeared euphoric and full of energy despite the long march. Peter Lineker, compact but strong in stature, had already built rapport with the other soldiers through his open and helpful manner, and Ferdinand Cummerbund looked small and lost. Eventually we found the dugout of Lieutenant von Karlsbruck, to whom we had been assigned. So you are, and officer, he greeted me. You seem to have taken your time. Surely you are fit enough to start work straight away. The lieutenant's condescending gaze swept over my men and then rested appraisingly on me. My men are tired. Herr Lieutenant, I objected. The train broke down. We had to hurry so that we could... The lieutenant raised his hand. Don't think you'll get away with your lazy excuses with me, Hound Officer. I'll have to put that nonsense out of your mind. His contemptuous look pierced me. Find your sleeping quarters and then report back to me. In the meantime, I will think of a sufficiently difficult task for your group to learn right away what being tired really means here at the front. I looked at my men's faces. They looked dejected and angry, but also grateful for my attempt to stand up for them. Without so much as another glance at me, Leuton von Karsbruck turned back to the documents on his table. Welcome to the trenches here, Unterfizier. Okay. Click and hold the left mouse button to rotate the camera. Click on a location icon to jump to it. Exclamation mark. Important convos. Button at the bottom right, which is this thing. These are all the interactions required for this turn and ends the turn. Okay. Um. I suppose let's chat with Khan who is highly motivated, optimistic, physically fit, but tired, and favourable. 
I like the different aspects to their personalities as well. Colonel Dorf is here. We only have the rations left that we took with us. Where are we supposed to get something to eat around here? Yep, that's an important one. Current circumstances are indicated by attribute icons such as weather or resources. The icon shows your... this icon, that one, shows your prestige with your superiors on the left and the mood of your soldiers on the right. Incidents of a turn often change the values of your soldiers, of course. Um, I suppose we do need to fetch some rations. But... Leutnant von Karsbruck has something for us as well. Sign a soldier to... Sign a project to a soldier by dragging his portrait onto the project. Certain projects have a fixed number of soldiers needed for them. It's indicated by a number of silhouettes. For other projects, it's up to you to assign how many soldiers you assign. The more, the better. Okay. Herr Leutnant. Took you long enough. There's no time to get comfortable. Go and gather your men. The communication trench has collapsed. It must be rebuilt immediately. You'll have to take care of your supplies yourself. Send somebody to the supply depot to, for that. Okay, well, um... Delay of maintaining the trenches will have consequences. That's fun. Um... Just checking to see if there's anything different. We'll send the tired people to maintain the trenches and come upon who is strained can gather resources. So that's exhausting, but it doesn't seem as exhausting as maintaining the trenches. I think that seems reasonable. Okay. Well, we have rations, and the Lieutenant has orders. Go on to Officer, your group is on night watch tonight. Make sure your men don't fall asleep. Great. Okay. Trained in shooting. That's good. Come about faltering and strained. He attentive though, that makes him useful on night watch, but he can not do it. Ah, Cone is completely by the book, that's useful. Minica is somewhat pragmatic. Send Lurtz off to get more food. And Cumberbund can just sit this one out. Wednesday, March 3rd, 1915. A few hours ago, the roar of the artillery had begun. At first, it was as quiet as the rumble of thunder in the distance, but recently it had become steadily louder and more threatening. Suddenly, there was a thud, and not ten meters from the hiding spot where my men were huddled, an artillery shell shredded the dugout of our neighboring troop. Pieces of wood and metal flew for meters, and smoke obscured the view. The noise was deafening for a few seconds, then died away as quickly as it had come. An almost eerie, silent gasp of shock passed. Then my men and I jumped. 
pushed aside broken beams and such to our bed comrades. We found two for whom all help came too late. A third, however, we could still hear panting. He was lying with his upper body trapped under the fallen beams. His face was distorted with pain and he was barely conscious. My men stood around him, forlorn, but looked over to me for help. Commandant said pleadingly, Hound officer, we must try to help him. Together, we lifted the beam from his chest and only now saw the full extent of the damage. His chest looked crushed, his hip strangely twisted. A long splinter protruded from his abdomen and his shirt was soaked in blood. Lineker shook his head. It's beyond help. The mercy killing would save him and us both misery. I don't care. Get a stretcher, men. We are saving lives. Get a stretcher, I ordered Cumberbund and Lineker. First I wanted to get him out of this wreckage and then decide whether I would expose my men to the danger of carrying him to the military hospital. So as the nurses could determine whether and how to help him. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, um, who's going to be doing this? I'm thinking Con and Lineker as the most physically fit of us. Um, what's going on here? Con, speak to me. Hey, on top, the advance emplacement has been destroyed by artillery. Now we're missing a well-covered position there. The French have an easy way into our trenches. I'm afraid that if we try to rebuild this position directly at the front line, the French will do their best to prevent it. Okay. Uh, we should rebuild the emplacement, shouldn't we? But then, also... Herr Leutnant. So artillery must have destroyed one of our telephone lines. Instruct one of your men to carry this message to the command post immediately. The French are planning an attack and we urgently need more men. Uh, yeah, that's actually kind of important. Um, no, it's not much point with sending Cumberbund out. Lots, you do your thing. <sighs> and Cumberbund just needs to wait, really. Just hang out all by his lonesome. He'll be fine, I'm sure. Okay. Cone is now strained. Um, right. The least tired people need to be on rebuilding emplacements. Lineker, what's up, mate? Hound officer. The wounded man we took to the field hospital, unfortunately he died. We did what we could. The people in the field hospital too, I guess it was just too late for him. I'm glad we tried, but it's still saddening. Yeah, it does suck. But, these things happen. It is, after all, a war that we're in the middle of. Defensive position is fine. Herr Leutnant has nothing for us. We're good. We can just actually 
bugger it. They can get rations while we've still got some time for them to do so. Friday, March 5th, 1915. For the past day, my man and I have been sitting tightly packed in our bunker while the French artillery rained down salvo after salvo of death and destruction on us. During the hard work of our first days in the trenches, I had hardly found a quiet minute to have a personal conversation with my men. Now, so now they were sitting next to me, tense and still mostly strangers. I fervently hoped that I would survive the shelling unscathed. The silence between us was in sharp contrast to the constant droning outside. Then, after hours, finally firing suddenly stopped. A sigh of relief went through the ranks of some of the young soldiers. However, that was the moment when the veterans of the other troops tensed up and began to load their rifles. A cacophony of whistles snapped us out of our stupor as well. The French were attacking. Stay together, people! I shouted to my soldiers and led them to our positions in the trenches. Together, we halted and mentally prepared ourselves for the upcoming battle. Ha! Huh. I think the correct word for this circumstance is scheisse. Um, after that volley of artillery, I am going to end this episode here so that we can get into action with the next one. I hope you've enjoyed this first few days of All Quiet in the Trenches. It's not that quiet in the trenches. Anyway, for now, farewell. I will return soon with more.